Now, your forecast first. Sponsored by Randy Palmieri and Son Incorporated. Your number one choice since 1977. Good evening. I'm your local weather authority, Chief Meteorologist Chris Yates. It has been a wonderful day in central Illinois and then a few showers once again pushing on through. But nice temperatures now in Galesburg, 70 degrees. Skies mostly clear. Good shot on our trouble free sky cam. 70 now in Lakin, Peru, LaSalle, 69. It's 68 degrees out at Pontiac. Through the rest of tonight, mostly clear early. A few clouds moving in by early tomorrow morning. Temperatures are dropping back into the 60s. Now we could see a few stray showers tomorrow. We'll break down that forecast coming up. WYZZ News at 9 starts now. Banking on you to help bring a missing girl home. The offer authorities are making for information leading to an arrest. Governor Rauner has strong words for lawmakers the night before a special session begins. I'm Shane Gustafson. We'll hear from the governor and how lawmakers are reacting. And selling screen time to kids under the age of 13 could soon be illegal in one state, why one group is calling for the change. But first, Governor Rauner calling on lawmakers to pass a balanced budget. It comes one night before the General Assembly returns to Springfield to begin a 10-day special session. WYZZ's Shane Gustafson is in the newsroom with more on what that governor had to say. He tops our 9 at 9 tonight. Shane? Yeah, Paul, the goal of the special session is to end the state's almost three-year budget crisis. And with the spending plan already in place and passed by the Senate, a deal could be close. We can all do better. We must all do better for the citizens of Illinois. Governor Bruce Rauner sending a message to lawmakers. Failure to act is not an option. Failure to act may cause permanent damage to our state that will take years to overcome. Illinois hasn't had a full balanced budget for almost three years, causing social services and other programs to lose thousands in state aid. The damage will only get worse. Folks with disabilities, the elderly, and then of course folks that are uh, folks of need coming from our, our low income areas of our communities. And those people I'm, I'm hearing from on all three groups on a regular basis, and it's tragic. It is tragic. Republicans hope a plan introduced by State Senator Bill Brady, dubbed the Capital Compromise, could be the solution. It's a plan the governor says he'll sign. It moves us to middle ground on key issues. It is truly balanced. It funds schools, higher education, and human services. It provides a real path to property tax reduction. Senate Democrats say their work is done, having already sent a spending plan to the House before session came to a close at the end of May. State Senator Dave Kaler said in a statement, quote, after almost 700 days without a budget and almost 200 days since calling off leaders' meetings, the governor now feels he must give a speech about unity while he publicly attacks the very people he has to work with. But Senate Republicans say their plan could pass. The Senate Democrats are there, and uh, uh, at least I believe they're there based on our negotiations with what we've laid out. And uh, I believe the House Democrats can be there as well. Now, the House will need a three-fifths majority to pass any budget plan during the special session. State Senator Brady says big changes could come to the state once the budget is passed. We'll have more from him coming up in our 930 half hour. Paul. Shane, thanks. Comptroller Susanna Mendoza says being forced to make payments the state can't afford puts Illinois in a worse situation. The state is over $14 billion in the hole. Mendoza says Illinois will no longer be able to guarantee, quote, timely and predictable payments in a number of areas starting in July. She says the state is cash strapped as it is and payments may be limited in core areas that are not under court mandate. As Illinois prepares to enter another fiscal year without a balanced budget, here's your chance to express your frustration to state lawmakers. AARP is co-hosting a legislative breakfast with Bradley University. Doors open tomorrow morning at 7.30 in room 116 in Westlake Hall. State Senators Dave Kaler and Chuck Weaver are expected to be there. Bartonville's police chief running for Peoria County Sheriff. It was a story WYZZ brought you on Monday. If elected, Brian Fangle says he will continue incumbent Sheriff Mike McCoy's anti-heroin initiative, focusing on safe passage for drug addicts to help them with their recovery. He also intends on addressing new technology for the entire county. One being, you know, the computers in the car and having everybody on the same system using the same uh, makeup as far as what we do as far as crime fighting. Fingal is expected to make a formal announcement at 10 a.m. tomorrow at the Village Hall in Bartonville. A familiar face will soon take over as the top cop in Peoria County. Jail Superintendent Brian Asbell has worked in the Peoria County Sheriff's Office for over 20 years. 
He'll be sworn in as the interim sheriff following the resignation of Mike McCoy next Thursday. Superintendent Brian Asbell says he's honored to take over the position and has several ideas to bring to the table, including reentry programs for drug offenders. I hope that I can be the mentor to the new employees like Mike McCoy was for me. Mike McCoy's many things to me. He, he was obviously my boss, um, my mentor, um, but most importantly, he's been my friend. Sheriff McCoy tells us he expects Asbell to make a run for sheriff in 2018. County board members will approve the appointment in July. The village of Tremont will see some changes to its recycling program come August. Through Facebook and by telephone calls and even here at the Village Hall, they've uh, requested the curbside pickup in the past. Tremont is switching to a curbside recycling collection service. Homeowners currently put recycling in a bin next to the water tower. For $7.50 a month, they'll be able to use a bin at their curb instead. A campaign is underway in Colorado to ban sales of smartphones to children. Parents against underage smartphones are pushing for a ballot initiative that would make it illegal for stores to sell to kids under 13 or to adults who intend to give a smartphone to a preteen. Now, if approved, cell phone stores would have to ask the age for intended users and could face fines for multiple violations. Local families say they agree that change is needed, but believe the responsibility falls on parents. She needs to be able to have contact with them and just for safety. So, um, so then I thought, well, I, I don't act necessarily like the idea of having a law of banning parents from making that decision for their kids. The supporters need more than 100,000 signatures to get it on the ballot next year. WYZZ's Cody Sheever will have more on that story in our second half hour. Well, the reward is increasing in the search for a visiting scholar at the University of Illinois. It's clear that the community has a real passion for this case and they really want to see uh, a good resolution. And so our part is a very small part uh, in managing the financial side of that. Ying Ying Zhang was last seen getting into a black Saturn Astra on June 9th. Surveillance video appears to show the vehicle being driven by a white man. The FBI is calling the case a kidnapping. $40,000 are being offered for information leading to an arrest. Anyone with information is asked to call the Champaign County Crime Stoppers. That number, 217-373-TIPS. The official start to summer begins at 1124 tonight, also known as the June solstice. The timing is not based on a specific calendar date and time. It depends on when the sun reaches its northernmost point from the equator. And with summer, it sounds like it's time to bring on the heat. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Chris Yates for a quick look at the forecast. Chris? Paul, you got that absolutely right. Hotter temperatures certainly on the way by uh, by Thursday to be exact, but we're not going to have to sit in it too long because we'll actually have some relief. Now, today wasn't bad. It was nice, comfortable, a little muggy at times. We had some showers to help cool us off this afternoon. All those showers now working out of central Illinois, still dealing with a few spotty rain showers in Tazewell County, far Logan County, and uh, far northern portions of Logan County and into McLean County. But, of course, as expected, more beautiful rainbows to be seen today. How about a rainbow in uh, out in Bloomington? Dan Whalen sending us this shot of a nice full rainbow. Great looking shot there, Dan. Mike and Kathy Morrison from Lake in Illinois. Nice full rainbow over the corn. Beautiful looking shot. Got some more coming to you from Rutland, Illinois. Dre Brandt sending this to us. And then another good looking shot. Seeing double in Peoria. Good looking uh, uh, picture there, Paul. Wilkinson. Now, of course, if you have any rainbow storm pictures you'd like to share, feel free to post them right to our social media pages and we'll share them with the viewers at home. Here's a look at our weather headlines. Quiet tonight, stray showers still possible tomorrow, but the heat, well, it's set to return on Thursday. We will be breaking down that forecast coming up in just a little bit. Paul? Chris, thanks. Still ahead, beating the heat. Our own Bob Larson has tips on how to stay cool this summer. Plus, the man who serves as the mouthpiece of the White House may be stepping back from his duties as press secretary. Why Sean Spicer could be taking a new role. And Cubs slugger Anthony Rizzo, the center of attention in Chicago tonight. His slide in last night's game against San Diego deemed illegal by Major League Baseball because he failed to avoid a collision with the catcher at the plate. Kurt Pegler will tell us what kind of discipline Rizzo faces ahead in sports.
You're watching WYZZ News at 9 with Lauren Langer. Chief Meteorologist Chris Yates with your local weather authority forecast. And Kurt Pegler with sports. This is WYZZ News at 9. Embarrassed to smile? Low self-confidence? Ready to enjoy your favorite foods again? The Fair Dental Group has a solution for you. Call today for your free consultation and 3D image. The Fair Dental Group, where we treat you like family. Honda knows you're always on the lookout for something better, which is why we took the best-selling CUV in America and gave it more interior space than ever before. Even smoother handling. And a sharp new exterior. So if you're looking for something truly impressive, look no further. The new CRV. Nothing compares to a Honda. for $5.99 a month at your local Mercedes-Benz dealer. Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing. Embarrassed to smile? Low self-confidence? Ready to enjoy your favorite foods again? The Fair Dental Group has a solution for you. Call today for your free consultation and 3D image. The Fair Dental Group, where we treat you like family. This portion of WYZZ News at 9 is brought to you by Bex Florist. If you weren't watching Good Day Central Illinois on WYZZ, you missed a lot. Three time gold medal winner Michael Phelps will join a race a great white shark for the Discovery Channel Shark Week. The event is slated for the last week of July. We're worried for Michael Phelps' safety. I'm worried for the shark safety too. Michael Phelps, you know how much that guy eats on a daily basis? Yes, he can eat the shark. And that wouldn't be enough. Discover why more and more people are waking up their day with Good Day Central Illinois. Weekday mornings from 7 to 9 on WYZZ. Now your local weather authority, WYZZ Chief Meteorologist Chris Yates. Welcome back. A nice, beautiful day. We had some showers and storms earlier today in Pontiac, but in the wake of those storms, not a bad sunset. Great looking shot. A few alto cumulus kind of streaming on past. A nice fiery sky as that sun was setting. Great looking time lapse from our Pontiac RV sky cam. The rain also cooled us off quite a bit. 68 degrees now in Pontiac. Sun is setting. It is just a beautiful evening out there all across central Illinois. Upper 60s in Peru as well. 70 now. Lake and Sparlin, Galesburg, 70 degrees. Peoria, East Peoria, all hanging around the 72 degree mark. And highs today, talk about heating up. That's about where we should be. Temps were in the mid to upper 80s this afternoon. Some locations, Savannah, Lincoln, getting awfully close to 90 degrees. But we'll get there. We'll be back into the low 90s by the uh, end of this week, at least by Thursday before another brief uh, cool down works in from the north. But look at the heat. You want some heat? Denver, Colorado, a mile above sea level, 99 degrees this afternoon, 101 in Salt Lake City, Phoenix, Arizona, setting a record high of 119, breaking the previous record of 116 degrees. To get relief from the heat in the southwest, you need to hit the coast. That's where temperatures were actually into the 70s. Medford, Oregon, by the way, also hot at 93 degrees. Now across the country, one little wave kind of skirting past us tonight, but a larger storm system and what is going to be the weather story across the nation is the first named storm finally impacting us in the southeast. This is Tropical Storm Cindy. It is sending in a lot of rainfall now up along the southeast coastline. The area of low pressure associated with Tropical Storm Cindy is still well off the coast there into the central part of the Gulf of Mexico. 45 mile per hour sustained winds. Pressure now sitting at 997 millibars. Now some of that moisture is going to push northward and will impact parts of the state later this week. Not so much here in central Illinois. More on that coming up in just a moment. We'll have to watch for a...
potential cluster of showers and storms developing late tonight, early tomorrow morning. Those will be moving in perhaps to central Illinois tomorrow if they can hold together. So we are going to be looking at least a chance of some spotty showers, maybe a rumble of thunder tomorrow afternoon. As for tonight, it'll be quiet. Skies becoming clear. Temperatures returning to the 60s and 50s tomorrow. Mostly sunny, but it should be brief. We'll have some clouds working in. It looks like any chance of rain for the most part should steer to our north, but I wouldn't completely rule out a stray shower moving in tomorrow afternoon. It's not going to be widespread. There might be a clap of thunder with it. Otherwise, warm and dry temperatures are expected to be back into the mid 80s. So your day planner tomorrow, a chance of a stray shower, otherwise dry and warm, but comfortable with highs returning to the mid 80s. Once this front lifts northward, that's when the heat returns. Highs will be back into the 90s on Thursday. Here's that tropical moisture coming in from Tropical Storm Cindy. We'll be looking at some thunderstorms returning to central Illinois Thursday night, but mainly with that front dropping in from the north. Now those storms will continue through at least Friday morning. Colder air behind that front drops temperatures down into the 70s heading into this weekend. So while it will heat up for a day and it will be a little uncomfortable as well, it will be looking a little better by this weekend. Finally uh, can give the air conditioners a chance to uh, cool off. We'll get a couple of days, uh, a little break there. Open up the windows at night, Turn maybe turn the fans on. Sounds good to me. All right, Chris, thanks. Still ahead, the heat can be especially troubling for the young at heart, how you can stay safe while enjoying the great outdoors. How would you sum up this car in one word? Um. East Peoria on the Storm Tracker Skycam Network, sponsored by Smart Local One. This spring, pick your power. Steel Fuel Powered Equipment is the number one selling brand in America. And the Steel Lightning Battery System delivers the power to do more on a single charge. Right now, you can pick fuel or battery at a great price with trimmers starting at just $129.95. Or choose one of our popular easy to use blowers starting at just $139.95. Pick your power, then pick up a steel. Visit steeldealers.com. You're watching WYZZ News at 9 with Lauren Langer, Chief Meteorologist Chris Yates with your local weather authority forecast, and Kurt Pegler with sports. This is WYZZ News at 9. The heat is on in central Illinois, and many of us will be soaking in some sun. But there are some risks to watch out for this summer. Bob Larson takes a look in this week's Active Life. Summertime is just around the corner, and with it comes some risks for seniors. The folks at AARP say there are some things you need to watch out for to stay safe. First off, when you're out and about, beware of heat exhaustion. It's easier to get sick from the heat than you might think. So make sure you wear lightweight clothing in layers that you can actually take off easily and stay in the shade and also stay cool and hydrated. Next. Be on the lookout for bugs, mosquitoes, and other pests. They will be out in full force. And make sure to use bug spray, soybean oil, or citronella candles to keep them away. Another thing you need to do is to protect your feet. Hiking and extended periods of walking can cause blisters. And you should avoid popping them to prevent infections. The AARP says one of the best treatments is to apply cool green tea to reduce swelling. And lastly, Make sure to be careful in the garden. Let someone know what you're doing or get a medical alert device so that if you fall, you can get some help. Just some things to keep in mind as the weather gets warmer. And living an active life, I'm Bob Larson. There's a heat wave out west. Record highs were set Monday in California, Nevada, and Arizona. Experts say the stifling heat is extremely dangerous. It's so hot, some airlines canceled flights. However, flights from Peoria International Airport to Western destinations were not impacted. Well, less is more when it comes to vitamin D. It's known as the sunshine vitamin because the body makes it naturally when exposed to the sun. Studies have hinted at potential harm, such as excess calcium in the blood, which can cause deposits in blood vessels. The recommended daily amount of vitamin D is 600 international units for adults aged 70 and younger. For those over 70, the recommendation is 800 international units a day. You can also get vitamin D from fortified foods like milk and naturally in fatty fish like salmon. 
Are you all talk and no action when it comes to your fitness? A new survey shows most Americans want to be in better shape, but few are putting in the work to get there. Some people said being in shape and looking good was very important. Others wanted to change something about their body appearance while many people judged themselves too fat. Experts say working out to improve your health is the best motivator and suggest doing so for at least 30 minutes five times a week. Well, taking the president to court why members of Congress are suing Donald Trump. And a record-breaking baseball game hits it out of the park. How much organizers of the congressional ball game raised following last week's shooting. Shakes riding shotgun. Oh, yeah. Now, the world is your diner. With new Denny's online ordering, get whatever you want, whenever you want, now, wherever you want. Order at Denny's.com. It all started in grade school band and then progressed into something bigger and better. I was part of something and it was really awesome. Rent your band or orchestra instrument from the Music Shop and Pro Sound Center, downstate Illinois' largest instrument retailer, proudly serving over 300 Illinois school systems. Rent online and pick it up at the store or have it delivered. The Music Shop and Pro Sound Center, specializing in music education since 1961 with stores in Normal and Champaign. Capturing sponsored by Always Here Hearing Center. At Menards, home improvement means saving big because right now you'll get an 11% rebate on everything, even sale prices. Update your bathroom with Max. This Saks freestanding tub is $559.81 after rebate. Finish your update with a new Moen faucet. This Gibson bathroom faucet is $61.41 after rebate. This Conway bathroom faucet is $88.11 after rebate. Stop waiting and start saving with an 11% rebate on everything, even sale prices now at Menards. Save big money at Menards. You're watching WYZZ Music 9. After five months on the job, White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer is likely stepping down. As Joel Waldman reports, it comes as the Trump administration faces increasing pressures on multiple fronts, both at home and abroad. Press Secretary Sean Spicer in a familiar position on the podium, but not for long as he prepares to take on a new role. I don't think that job has ever been tougher. Spicer served as the official mouthpiece for the Trump administration since January. But now the 45-year-old is moving on to lead the White House communications office. I think the briefing is one aspect of what we do. Spicer has drawn criticism since day one on the job, mainly for what some consider to be combative behavior, as well as his occasional gaffes. Even today, in response to concerns the White House is holding fewer press briefings, Spicer quickly defending the White House communications team, insisting it's working harder to be more transparent. I understand you'll always have issues, you always want more, um, and that's fair. I mean, that's your right. Meantime, the White House increasingly under pressure both at home and abroad. The death of Otto Warmbier intensifying an already tense situation with North Korea. The 22-year-old college student, imprisoned by Pyongyang for allegedly taking a propaganda sign, was recently sent home in a vegetative state before passing away. That should never, ever be allowed to happen. And frankly, if he were brought home sooner, I think the result would have been a lot different. There's still no word on who will replace the press secretary or when, but apparently Sean Spicer himself will make the call. In Washington, Joel Waldman, Fox News. Senators Dick Durbin and Tammy Duckworth joining 194 members of Congress in filing a lawsuit against President Trump. They say the president violated the Constitution by receiving numerous benefits from foreign states without seeking approval. Now, that includes payments from foreign governments, housing officials at rooms in Trump's hotel in Washington, D.C., and accepting benefits from foreign governments in connection with his businesses around the world. Senator Durbin says, quote, from his singular refusal to disclose his income tax returns to his failure to divest his global web of business holdings, President Trump has defied well-established standards of disclosure and propriety. Senator, Duck Senator, Senator Duckworth excuse me, says, by refusing to divest from his business interests or place his assets in a blind trust, the president has made it possible for him to profit from his position in government. Republicans and Democrats on Capitol Hill coming together to donate blood, a sign of unity following last week's shooting that injured Congressman Steve Scalise and four others. Law enforcement agents killed the shooter, James, James Hodgkinson, who was from Illinois. Vice President Mike Pence says it's inspiring to see politicians, staffers, and others join forces.
When tragedy strikes, people come together, uh, just like Americans always do. And uh, I heard of the blood drive today. I was in meetings in the Senate uh, talking about health care, but wanted to come by today and show support. Organizers say each pint given can save up to three lives, adding it's just one of the little things they can do to help Scalise and others. Well, the congressional baseball game Thursday set a record for fundraising and ticket sales. Organizers say the game raised $1.5 million compared to $500,000 last year. Part of the money will support those injured in the attack and the officers who responded to the scene. Well, Senate Democrats are demanding to know more about a Republican plan to overhaul the nation's health care system. Republicans are trying to pass their version of the American Health Care Act before the 4th of July, but some admit they don't even know what's in the bill. It's outrageous that this bill is being negotiated behind closed doors with no public input. This administration is literally working around the clock with leaders in the United States Senate to move forward legislation in the very near future. Republicans say they're getting plenty of input and are confident they have enough support to pass health care reform. Democrats are urging GOP leadership to be more transparent, especially about proposed cuts to Medicaid. A Republican data firm hired by the Republican National Committee last year under fire after personal information of nearly 200 million voters leaked. Deep Root Analytics blamed the incident on a security setting upgrade. The data included names, birth dates, addresses, voter registration details, and social media posts. A cyber risk analyst discovered the open database on June 12th, saying it was available for anyone to download. Deep Root admitted the data had been exposed for nearly several weeks before being secured. The Republican National Committee says it's no longer working with Deep Root. Still ahead, bad for business. The group's urging local lawmakers not to gamble the state's finances. Four Peoria Chiefs are playing in the Midwest League All-Star Game, and the most inconspicuous of the bunch might be pitcher Mike O'Reilly. He doesn't dazzle scouts with electric stuff, no fastball in the high 90s. He just gets guys out with his head, not necessarily his arm. And it's working. We'll introduce you to Mike O'Reilly ahead in sports. Head to UFS for free carpet installation. Now on Shaw and Mohawk Carpet. UFS, about 10 minutes from anywhere. Ford F-Series is the truck. Peoria on the Storm Tracker Skycam Network. Brought to you by Goods. Now, your forecast first. Sponsored by Randy Palmieri and Son Incorporated. Your number one choice since 1977. Welcome back. It has been a nice day. Some scattered showers, a few gusty winds here or there with some of those showers and a lot of beautiful rainbow picks. Keep them coming. We love to see them. 67 degrees in uptown normal. Beautiful shot on our sundown roofing sky camp. Peoria 72, Lake at Sparland 70. We have some more 60s out there. Peru, LaSalle, also Pontiac holding in the 60s. Here's a look at your planner for the rest of tonight. Temperatures, well, they're going to be bound for the low to mid 60s later on tonight. Skies mostly clear, but we could see a few clouds rolling in tomorrow. Some of us might even squeeze out a little bit of rain. I'll be breaking down that forecast and more, which unfortunately or fortunately, if you love summer heat, we got some of that heading our way too. We'll break down that forecast in just a bit. Paul? Chris, thanks, and thank you for tuning into our second half hour. Governor Rauner has some strong words for lawmakers the night before a special session begins. Some Republicans say a balanced budget could be close. WYZZ's Shane Gustafson joins us now to explain. Shane? Yeah, Paul, lawmakers are back in Springfield for 10 days looking for a way to pass a balanced budget. Last week, parts of the grand bargain passed through the state Senate, which helps both sides with, with help from both sides of the aisle. Tonight, Republican lawmakers hope the bill will pass through the state House the same way. Governor Bruce Rauner kicked off the 10-day session with a speech tonight calling for unity with, the, with upcoming talks. Republican State Senator Bill Brady of Bloomington says the state could be on the verge of a budget and big changes could follow. Our bond rating will change. Uh, corporations that are looking to build markets will, will relook at us, and uh, I believe existing companies will reinvest in this state. Now the House will need three-fifths of a majority to pass a budget during this special session. And of course, uh, the state will enter its third year without a budget on July 1st if nothing is passed. Paul. Shane, thanks. Leaders in the Twin Cities also weighing in on the lack of a state budget. The Economic Development Council says the current situation adds uncertainty to companies looking to do business in Illinois. It, it just impacts us and it, and it puts us in the wrong light because 
think Illinois is still a great state to be in with a lot of good assets. It just, it kind of hurts that reputation. The McLean County Chamber of Commerce also weighing in, saying it's pleased lawmakers are going back to Springfield, but, quote, the fiscal damage that has been done to our state and community has been tremendous, but not reaching a budget compromise by June 30th will be devastating. A new program is in the works for businesses on Route 66 in danger of losing funding when a federal grant expires. WYZZ's Brianna Lee has more from our Twin Cities newsroom. Route 66 is known for its historic motels, restaurants, and stores, some of which are funded by a federal grant that ends in 2019. With federal legislators against that grant, the Bloomington normal portion of the route could take a hit. Interestingly enough, it was available to private uh, owners if you needed to restore your restaurant's you know, facade, you know, fix the roof, whatever it may be. Kelly says the grant money is used for repairs and maintenance. He says they are working on a National Historic Trail program so the businesses don't have to go without that money. Kelly says he thinks it has a reasonable chance of becoming law before the current grant program ends. Reporting in Bloomington, Brianna Lee, WYZZ News. The Bloomington Public Library says it's bursting at the seams. At a meeting last night, the library's board discussed plans to expand the facility with the council. According to the library's strategic plan, the over 40-year-old building is long overdue for upgrades. A, quote, band-aid approach to fix immediate needs would require $2 million, but a more extensive plan could cost up to $39 million. Some town leaders want to see the more expensive option completed in steps to ease the financial burden. The library says if approved, construction is probably a couple years away. It's the last day to register your child for the 16th annual State Farm Youth Classic in Bloomington. It's one of the largest youth golfing events in the nation. The tournament runs June 26th to the 28th. There's a link to register with more information at ciproud.com. An iconic rock band is coming to Central Illinois. Foo Fighters will play at the State Farm Center in Champaign on November 8th. Tickets go on sale starting July 13th at 10 a.m. You can call the State Farm Center or visit statefarmcenter.com to purchase tickets. Well, a campaign is underway in Colorado to ban sales of smartphones to kids. WYZZ's Cody Sheever has reaction from local parents. They're too dependent on technology and thinking about, like, not having access to apps and games all the time is not a bad idea. For Tisha you know, Sparks, a mother of two and an aunt to a 12-year-old, restricting the amount of time her children spend on their phone is a necessary precaution taken by she and her husband. There's actually a timer on the, on the tablet, so it'll time her out, and then if she wants to continue, then I have to reset it. She's not the only one who believes the younger generation can cope with less technology. A group in Colorado, Parents Against Underage Smartphones, came up with a proposal to outlaw sales of smartphones to children children under 13. The kids aren't playing out there anymore. There are certain critical stages of development that are not happening. If approved, cell phone stores would have to ask the age for intended users and could face fines for multiple violations. Dr. Tim Farnham says only 19% of parents believe their preteen should have a smartphone. What we're doing to kids is not right. We are just, we're abandoning kids to technology and it's doing them a lot of harm. Some parents in central Illinois agree. They spend too much time on the apps and on the internet and they need to be outside more. But Tisha Sparks believe it's not the right solution for her kids. Recommendations I think are great, uh, maybe even education, uh, but I don't think that it should be a law. In Peoria, Cody Sheever, WYZZ News. The supporters in Colorado still need more than 100,000 signatures to get that proposal on the ballot next year. Now that proposal would allow cell phones to be sold to kids, but not the smartphones that come with access to games and other apps. Well, we'll have a recap of some of tonight's top stories coming up, but first let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Chris Yates. Chris. Thanks, Paul. Pretty decent day out there. A little bit of rain to kind of cool us off this afternoon and evening. Take a look at our almanac. High temperature, 88 degrees. Peoria picking up 607 inch of rainfall. That looks like we'll be looking at more rain chances and even a little more heat over the next couple of days. We'll have that forecast coming up next. YZZ Chief Meteorologist Chris Yates. Welcome back. A nice evening underway in central Illinois. The rain showers, isolated thunderstorms, they are moving out. Here's the current view in Bloomington from our Dillman Brothers Sky Camp. Pavement still a little bit, a little bit wet. As you just had some recent showers and storms move on through those showers now still skirting through southern portions of McLean County. 67 degrees currently. Winds 
Well, they're a little breezy, breezy out of the south southeast at 13 miles per hour, but those winds will decrease with time. Temperatures kind of all over the place. Low 70s in Peoria, 68 now in Lakin and Galesburg. Temperatures are in the lower 70s across Fulton County. Canton sitting around 73 degrees. Now across the state, we had two waves of storms push on through, the strongest of which generally were this southern end here. Now all these showers and storms continue to move out. High pressure briefly bringing in some dry air. But we'll watch for a disturbance that will be developing out across Iowa tomorrow that might provide us with at least some very spotty showers, maybe an isolated rumble of thunder, but the best chance of rain is more than likely going to stay well to our north. Meanwhile, across the country, uh, finally the first named storm of the, tr uh, not the first named storm of the tropical season, but the first named storm to impact the United States this season. It's Tropical Storm Cindy making her way on shore. A lot of heavy rain, some... Severe weather associated with that as well, but more so just the headaches coming to the heavy rain that's going to continue to impact the southeast. It is a tropical storm, winds of 45 miles per hour. Notice the center, though. It is well out in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico. The heavy rain is already pushing on shore and will continue to do so over the course of the next few days. Now, moisture from Cindy could be making its way into Illinois a little later this week, though most of that is not going to make it this far north. Thanks to that next storm system coming in from the west. As for tonight, it'll be quiet, but we could see the clouds returning tomorrow as this warm front pushes in. Models, at least a few of them, suggest the disturbance could develop along this warm front in Iowa, push into areas of central and northern Illinois tomorrow. So we'll at least have a chance for a hit or miss rain shower, but many of us will end up staying dry. Through tonight, mostly clear, some patchy fog, not out of the question. Temperatures will be down to the upper 50s and low 60s tonight. Peoria looking to drop down to 62. We should wake up to some sunshine tomorrow, but skies become partly cloudy by early to mid afternoon. This is when we could see a few passing showers out there, but the best chance of rain is generally expected to stay at least across northern Illinois, if not well into Wisconsin. So most of tomorrow will be dry, a spotty shower not out of the question. High temperatures still on the warm side, but close to average back into the mid 80s. This front continues to surge northward. That'll bring back the heat. Highs on Thursday will be in the 90s. There's that tropical moisture surging northward. We'll be watching a complex of storms developing up north in Wisconsin and northern Illinois Thursday afternoon because those storms Thursday night will be pushing southward, and that is when we could see our next chance of any severe weather, though it looks like the best chances for severe weather will generally stay north of I-74. Here's a look at that extended forecast. Storm chances will increase Thursday night and continue through Friday morning. Once that front moves through, temperatures are looking to cool off heading into the weekend. Highs back into the mid-70s on Saturday. A chance for some passing showers on Sunday with cool temps. Highs down into the low 70s. We'll keep it in the lower 70s through early next week before we bounce back to the upper 70s and 80s by Wednesday. I have to ask because I know that uh, this forecast is a lot more uh, your style than the 90s. You're you didn't just put that up there for your sake, did you? I didn't, but I was very thrilled when I was forecasting it earlier. I today. bet you were. <laughs> All right, Chris, thanks. All right, is Cubs star Anthony Rizzo in hot water with Major League Baseball after this rough slide last night? Kurt Pegler has sports after the break. Shopping. U.S. Cellular has unlimited data and got rid of hidden fees. Now's your turn. Move it! Go, go, go! Didn't we just get rid of that? Sure did. But activation fees pop up all the time. Again? Yep, every time you upgrade your phone. Why does this keep happening? Because you added a new line. And it looks like someone just got a new phone. That was me. Sorry, guys. Get iPhone 7 on us with no activation fees, only from U.S. Cellular. Large corporate nursing homes make millions of dollars each year. Your mom and dad pay for it. Our firm, Parker & Parker, handles cases of nursing home neglect, and other firms can't. And at Parker & Parker, we work with you personally. If you have questions about what happened in a nursing home, please give us a call. 
At Parker & Parker, we listen. This portion of WYZZ News is sponsored by Green Ford. You don't have to be a Green Ford deal. You gotta go to Green. Now, your local sports with WYZZ's Kurt Pegler. Four Chiefs players representing Peoria at tonight's Midwest League All-Star Game. Lefty Mike O'Reilly hoping to show the rest of the league what we already know. The guy who doesn't really look the part of an All-Star truly is one. When pitcher Mike O'Reilly took a picture with his Peoria All-Star teammates, even he felt a little out of place. He doesn't have the flash of, say, Chiefs pitcher Jordan Hicks, but he is an all-star because he gets guys out with his head, not necessarily his arm. Jordan's got incredible stuff. Uh, I wouldn't quite put myself in that same category, but I like to think that I have great command and uh, kind of can pitch smart and figure things out to get hitters out. You know, on the surface, you look at his stuff and, you know, you, you kind of seem to wonder, like, why he's so good, but it's just he truly owns uh, what he has. He knows what he does well, and he repeats and is very consistent with what he does. He may not look flashy, but his results are eye-popping. He already has one hit and two hit shutouts this season, mainly throwing pitches between 88 and 90 miles an hour. I'm sure it'd be a lot of fun to throw 99, but I still have, uh, still have a lot of fun pitching. I mean, it's what I love to do. Another reason why O'Reilly doesn't have the look of an all-star, he was a 27th round pick last year from a small school in Florida. Flagler College, a place that's not exactly known for pumping out big league prospects. Out of high school, uh, there were some offers for bigger schools, but my approach was uh, I thought that it would benefit me the most if I went down south and uh, had a great fit with Flagler College, and I just couldn't be more lucky to find a great situation like that. He's the inconspicuous pitcher from the small college, making a big splash with the Peoria Chiefs and being rewarded tonight with an all-star appearance. Great Lakes hosts the All-Star Game. Chiefs starter Jordan Hicks pitches to two hitters in relief. He whiffs them both. He hit 99 miles an hour on the speed gun. And what about O'Reilly? He pitched to one batter late in the game, got him out. The Chiefs' Stefan Trost player singled and scored, and those Chiefs players helped the West beat the East tonight 5-2. Anthony Rizzo putting together an All-Star season for the Cubs, but he's under some fire after this slide last night. He slides into Padres catcher Austin Hedges. That's an illegal slide according to Major League Baseball's collision rule. He was told that by the league today. The league says it will not discipline the Cubs star. Rizzo, by the way, hit a home run tonight. We'll show you that coming up on WMBD Sports at 1020. Cardinals open a road trip in Philadelphia. And yes, this young man is really enjoying the foul ball. Second inning, Jed Jorko hits this ball into the seats and left his 10th of the year. It gives the Cardinals a 1-0 lead, but this game would go to 11 innings, tied 1-1, one, one, and then the Cardinals are up for seven runs. Yadier Molina takes this pitch to left center. That's a two-run blast. That helps the Cardinals win tonight, 8-1. to one. And uh, the White Sox are playing uh, tonight against the Twins, and the normal Corn Belters are at home tonight. We've got more baseball coming up on WMBD Sports at 10:20. Something to look forward to. Yeah. All right, thanks, Kurt. And we'll recap some of tonight's top stories and have a final look at the forecast after the break. Stick around. New at Steak and Shake, 24 meters. You're watching WYZZ News at 9. Well, here's a look at some of tonight's top stories. Governor Rauner calling for unity ahead of a 10-day special session. The goal of that legislative period for lawmakers, of course, to reach a balanced budget before the start of the next fiscal year. The deadline for a budget next Friday. The reward for information leading to the arrest in a search for a visiting scholar at the University of Illinois, now $40,000. Yingying Zhang was last seen getting into a black Saturn Astra on June 9th. Surveillance video appears to show the vehicle being driven by a white man. And jail superintendent Brian Asbell is going to be sworn in as the interim sheriff in Peoria County following the resignation of Mike McCoy next Thursday. Superintendent Asbell says he is honored to take over that position. And it was a showdown between one homeowner and robbers in Florida, and that homeowner, homeowner, he came out swinging. Jeremy Roth takes a look.
Watch this Florida homeowner fight off a group of armed robbers with a machete. Police say the suspects broke into the man's Sarasota home armed with a shotgun. Surveillance first shows the homeowner grab a wooden board, then he grabs a machete. Police say the man was able to disarm and hold on to one of the suspects. In all, five people have been arrested in connection with the armed robbery. All five are facing charges. <laughs> Ever wonder what it would be like to climb a building? Well, watch urban climber Elaine Robert show you how it's done. The 55-year-old scaled one of the tallest buildings in Barcelona with no ropes or harnesses of any kind. He made it to the top of the 29-story Melia Hotel in just under 20 minutes. Robert has made a career of scaling structures worldwide, including the Golden Gate Bridge and the Eiffel Tower. He's known as the French Spider-Man. I am at the top. Are you seeing what I'm seeing, man? No, you aren't imagining things. This is what's known as a turf blister. It's what happens when water, like from heavy rains, gets trapped under a layer of unrooted sod and creates a freaky waterbed effect. This video was captured in western Kentucky after the area had reportedly experienced significant rainfall. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. Thankfully, nothing like that around here. 62 degrees tonight, clearing skies, pleasant overall. Tomorrow, not a bad day. Can't completely rule out a stray shower north of I-74, but it should be dry. 85 degrees will be the high. Looking ahead, we're back to 90 Thursday. A little taste of spring coming back around by the weekend. More storms Thursday night and Friday. Chris, thanks. Thank you for watching. We'll see you right back here tomorrow. More news, weather, and sports, ciproud.com. Have a great night. It all started in great